guys welcome back to my channel um, today I'm homesick uh, I've been catching something since I was in Las Vegas for a work convention and now I finally woke up today and it really hit me so don't mind the hair this is like two day old hair which is normally my favorite kind of hair but <clears throat> I'm really not doing anything with it and my voice is extra froggy today so I apologize in advance so while I'm homesick I thought I would catch up on some videos today I thought I would do half of my face um, some of the new ways that I've learned in the progression of my makeup <laughs> and the other half I'm going to do either mistakes that I used to do in the past or ones that I feel like are common mistakes I see on a lot of girls again this is personal preference if you do your makeup this side of my face it's my right but your left if you do your makeup this way and you like it uh, there is nothing wrong with that you do what makes you comfortable so first I feel like the first mistake that I used to make um, is I never really moisturized my face I know that sounds maybe silly but when I would get up in the morning if I washed my face I would just put my makeup right on that and it is important to keep your skin well hydrated um, a good trick is just to run your finger down your cheek and you can normally feel if you have dry patches or whatnot on your face I'm gonna do my best to stay just on this half and I'm going to moisturize this half of my face get a layer of moisture down with my Caudalie grape water and this side I'm not going to put it on we'll see if you can see a difference as time goes on and then I'm going to use my MAC moisture uh, infusion serum and I'm just going to moisturize half of my face as well my face gets really red when I rub it just because my skin's really sensitive it's like all the blood rushes to it so don't mind that <laughs> I don't have oily skin so I don't ever feel like a primer changes in the wear of my makeup but I do like to use a light infusing base just because I really like that dewy look in my makeup so um, I really like the Becca Ring Skin Perfector in Pearl but um, today I'm going to use my L'Oreal Magic Lumi primer and again I'm just going to put that on half of my face I'm just wanting to show you how important skin prep is because you can be great at makeup, but if you put it on a base that stinks, I mean, if your face is not in good condition, it doesn't matter how good it's gonna look. Half of the battle is what your skin looks like underneath. So, I don't know if you can tell. I mean, it might be hard to tell, but this is a little more reflective, and this is a little more not. <laughs> So next, um, something I always had, and my mother will be the first one to tell you, is I used to have kind of like a line of makeup because I never was wearing the right foundation shade. I was always wearing like a shade off of what it should be. So I would kind of have like a line, like in high school, I would have a line of where my makeup didn't match my neck. There are a couple things. First of all, you have to blend your makeup well, but getting a color that matches you is really important. That's actually what got me away from drugstore makeup is, you know, drugstore makeup can be of equal value, but it's really hard to match foundations and things without being able to open them up and put them on your face or without somebody there that can match you. So that was the first time that I actually went, I think it was Ulta that I went and I had one of their specialists match me with the color. So I feel like if you're going to splurge on something and makeup foundation, it should be the number one thing because that really makes a huge difference on the way your makeup looks. So I'm going to show you, I am light. Um, I have a neutral three here from uh, L'Oreal True Match Lumi that I'm going to show you. This is what I wore in my last video. And then I have a neutral four. Now this is just one shade darker. And again, when I, if I ever get any sun in the summer, which is rare, I will mix the shade to get a little deeper of a color. But I'm just gonna show you how something even just one shade off can throw off a look. So first I'm just going to take um, a pump, a little less, on the back of my hand and this is of the color that I should be. I'm just going to dot that on my face, half of my face again because I'm going to show you what it looks like on the other half. And then I'm going to take that neutral four, the buff beige, I'm going to put it on this side of my face. I have my Real Techniques sponge already dampened and wrung out. I'm just gonna blend that in and I'm gonna start with this side because it's lighter. You wanna make sure that you're pressing it into your skin. And this is something that I've learned because it really helps with the makeup wear if you grind, kind of grind it into your skin. So what I used to do before was I would just rub it. I would kind of do this. slight change but I don't know if you can tell right here 
this is the right color for me and this is the wrong one, the difference it makes. It looks kind of dirty. Now, another thing I think people do is, is they don't color correct before they highlight. They'll just stick, like today, surprisingly, I mean, yeah, I still have discoloration underneath my eyes. So <clears throat> I'm gonna show you how I've learned. First, um, on the side that I'm doing things properly, I'm going to take my NARS, um, this is my medium custard radiant creamy concealer and I'm just going to color correct where that those darker circles are again if you lean forward you can see like this and then I'm going to take a lighter color that I'm going to use to highlight and I'm going to put it right under that and this is um, bare mineral stroke of light luminous 2 shade and I'm just going to put that right underneath and make sure you take that back into your hairline and you normally want to even out your highlight because you don't want it just to be stark white underneath your eyes and nothing else. Now on this side, I'm just going to, not. I'm not gonna color correct, I'm just gonna go in with a lighter color concealer. And normally this is like what people would do, just right under your eye and not do it in the triangles. And I wouldn't necessarily balance out my highlight, I would just put it right under there. And the reason why it's important to bring it down is because after you color correct and it brightens, it lifts this whole area. If you just put it here, it's going to look like you have football paint on. Now I'm going to blend it. I'm going to do this side first. I kind of look like powder. I'm so white. <laughs> now I'm just going to, I don't know if I would wipe it like that, but I think I would just do this. Do you kind of see right now? Can you see why this looks like? A reverse raccoon eye. Another thing that I don't think I ever necessarily did was set my concealer when I put it on and that just prevents it from creasing. I mean you do have fine lines and wrinkles underneath your eye. So I'm going to show you on this side what I do. I like to mix a little yellow powder with that so I'll either use the Anastasia Beverly Hills with my MAC Emphasize or this Manica Dar Warm Yellow. And I'm just going to bounce that underneath there. And then I'm going to take that uh, MAC Emphasize and I'm just going to touch where else I highlighted on the right side. Something um, I'm gonna touch on, I know Kim Kardashian's makeup artist Mario uses the Ben Nye Banana Powder, and um, yellow is good for underneath your eyes because it can give you a brightening effect on most skin tones, but on somebody like me, to tell you the truth, if it's straight yellow, it can start to look sickly, like sallow underneath my eyes, and that's not what you wanna look like. Um, she, Kim Kardashian is very tan, obviously, I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna take a little of the Ben Nye Banana and I'm gonna put it on my brush and I'm just going to go under and do it on my eyes. Like Now, for me, on my skin tone, it's starting to turn this orange. I don't know if you can tell because the lighting is so bright in here, but it's starting to turn this orange. It's not giving me this bright look. It's looking ugh. Another thing I never did was use an eyeshadow base. The reason this is important is, especially if you have hooded eyes like me, it not only stops it from creasing, it stops it from transferring up and, you know, if I put eyeshadow on my lid right here when I blink, it'll transfer up here if it's not set well. So on this eye, I'm going to, and on the other eye, I'm not going to. And I'm using Urban Decay uh, Primer Potion. Everything I use um, will be in that Show More button that you can click right below this video and it will have it. Something I'm super guilty of is I never really use transition colors on my eyes. I think I would really just put one base, whatever eyeshadow I wanted, and I guess I would try to kind of blend it out like that. But it is very important to use a transition shade in any eyeshadow. It makes it so you don't have harsh lines and it looks more of like a blown out look. So for that, you wanna use something that's fairly close to your own skin color. I know uh, Peach Smoothie is very popular for that if you have lighter skin tone like me or a little darker. So I'm gonna take that on my MAC 224 brush and I'm just going to lay down that transition shade and where you want it is right here, right above the crease of your eye. Like if your eye is open, you wanna go right above that. What that's gonna do is it puts a little color down so any eyeshadow you put on top too, you can blend it in a lot easier. So a transition color you really can't live without. This one I'm, I'm not going to put one on because I never used to before. I'm going to do a purple smoky eye today. I went shopping with my mom who I wish I got to see more than I do. Um, we both work in the same industry actually and we had a trade show in Las Vegas 
last week so we were there and her and I of course had to go hit up Inglot that is in Caesars Palace in the forum shops just because we're both makeup pourers. So um, we went to Inglot and I started a massive Inglot eyeshadow collection. So thanks mommy, love you. Um, I just got some beautiful purples and I think that they would be fun to play with. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm also going to use some MAC shadows uh, for transition because I picked up some really cool colors but I didn't really get any neutral transition shades from Inglot yet. I will have all of those eyeshadows one day. I building up my collection between the Makeup Forever, I want to get all those artist eyeshadows, and the Inglot. I just can never have enough. So it's really important when you're doing a smoky eye or a look is that you build the colors, you know, from lightest to darkest. But now on my MAC 217, I am going to pick up Copper Plate from my MAC Shadows, which is this like grayish khaki color right here. And I'm going to start building in my crease of this one. Uh, I'm going to do purple, so I do want something that's not too warm. It depends on what kind of purples you're doing, but I'm going to put those in there. And all brushes make all the difference. So again, lightly building that color and lightly putting it on there, just back and forth. Next in my other MAC book, I'm going to pick up Handwritten, which is this brown right here on that same MAC 217. And I am going to go right underneath that, very lightly. And now I'm going to pick up a little bit of Max Carbon, which is this black, very lightly. And I'm just going to focus it on this crease part right in here. Very, very lightly, not too dark. Before I would just put the purple on and I would never think to mix browns with purples or something like that. It just would never dawn on me. So now another trick is to put a base down. If you want an eyeshadow to be really vibrant before I would think if you could put it over white it would make it pop more but with certain colors like purple actually black base is better because it really deepens up that color and makes it sparkle. So you have a few options of what you can use. I mean, any kind of black cream shadow, it's best if it doesn't crease, but um, this one is an awesome one. This is the Black Bean by NYX, and it's a relatively cheap jumbo pencil. Um, just because I've realized I don't ever use my MAC Fluid Line, this is in Black Trap. I'm going to use this as my base because it just sits there. It's, I don't find it to be a good eyeliner because it transfers, but I'm going to pick up a little of my Inglot Duraline because these tend to dry out and just put a drop in there. I'm going to pick this up on one of my It Cosmetics brushes and I'm just going to lay this down. Get it all over my eyelid. Go in with a smaller brush for the inside part of my eye. Just on the eyelid, don't go too high up. We're gonna blend some of that out. Now I have that kind of messy base, but a good black base. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to blend that. Now, something I love about Inglot eyeshadows, this was something I was actually talking to my mom about, even about shoes actually, I was making the comparison to, is how many pairs of shoes have I gotten like high heels either at um, I don't know guess I used to get some shoes but I spend a hundred dollars or so on a pair of high heels and then I never wear them because they're not comfortable and I don't like them so I think I'd rather just save and spend the money on a pair of shoes that are a little more expensive but that I'm comfortable in that I know will last me a long time that are well made I think the same thing about makeup I mean, how many drugstore eyeshadows did I have in the past? I had like containers of them and I would never wear them all the time because I wasn't happy with the performance of them. So something like Inglot, you get huge eyeshadows with them and they're $7. I mean, look how big this eyeshadow is. Let's compare it to a MAC, hold on. Okay, so here are MAC eyeshadows and here are the Inglot ones. These are $12, I think, for the MAC ones. 10 or 12, I'll list it, and these are seven, and you're getting a lot more product. Um, they have a huge range of colors too. Um, the only thing that is a little difficult is once they are in there with the magnet, it's kind of hard to pop them out, so I will have to list all the colors below that I'm using on my eyes, so it's not um, a complete mystery. I don't want to try to pry it out. I My mom got me a magnet that actually just lifts them right out so you can see, but um, until then, I'm not gonna try to pry them out. 
So now that that black is kind of dry, because I did put a little too much fluidine in there, I'm going to pick up some more carbon on my Sigma E25. And I'm just going to go back over that line and try to blend it out just a little right now. Ooh, that was a hard thing. I just got it out. Okay, so this is my Inglot 439 shadow. And I'm going to pick that up on a flat shader brush. And I'm going to pack this all over that black base I put down. I'm going to try to pack it on as heavy as I can. So you're going to try to pack on the most amount of that color that you can get right over that black that you had down. And if you can see how much that black really makes it pop. Now what I'm going to do is what I would have done before. I'm going to take this purple eyeshadow. I'm going to pack that on this lid. The same, same eyeshadow with no base, with no primer. It's still a beautiful color, but it's not gonna look the same. And I would wear this on its own without the black if I wasn't doing more of a smoky eye. That's what I would have done. I would have put it straight across my eyelid like this with really probably nothing else. Let's say you would take a lighter purple, right? A lot of people will stick in the same family. My Inglot palette, I'm going to pick up this lighter purple right here. Again, I'll list the numbers below because I don't want to try to pop them out right now. And let's say I would kind of sweep that on. I probably would have just done that and I wouldn't have had this brush. I would have been using those little ones that come in there. Now what I'm going to do is go back through with my MAC uh, 217 and I'm going to blend this eye. Next I'm going to line my under eye and I'm going to use my Urban Decay Psychedelic Sister. This is a 24-7 Glide-On pencil. Um, you could use, there's this NYX purple one and then even a Giordana. This is just their uh, Pro Long Purple and those would work too. This one is so thick you might want to take it off on an eye brush though and then put it on for more precise application. I'm just going to run this on the bottom of my eyelashes. And now I'm just going to take a synthetic brush and I'm going to pick up that same purple from my Inglot palette uh, and I'm going to trace that over and just kind of set it. I'm also going to take some of that and run it in my waterline. Now let me show you what old me would have done on this eye. <laughs> Black eyeliner was not my friend pretty much all through college. I would have lined my whole bottom line with this. I don't even know if I would have gone into my waterline. I think I would have just lined the whole bottom of my eye with black eyeliner. And if I didn't do this, I'd feel naked without it. That's what I would have done. I wish I could go back and tell me no. But I see a lot of girls do this actually. They go really heavy with their eye. And can you tell the difference on my eyes? How this one looks more open and this one looks really heavy. If you're gonna do anything, I always take a little bit of the eyeshadow that I'm using on the top and I put it on the bottom. I'll really smoke it out, but, and or it can be two different colors. Like this is actually a different purple than the one on top now because that's over black. But it ties the look together. This just looks like, I don't even know what this looks like, but this is what I used to do. Next, um, as you guys know, I got permanent cosmetics done. So <clears throat> my eyebrows look already pretty decent right off the get-go but um before I never paid attention to my eyebrows I mean I would get them plucked and things but I never went through and filled them in or anything so let me show you how even just to polish up a look that it looks better I do have to get a touch up in these so I'll show you I'm just gonna go through and fill in I think leaving them alone is better than what I used to do though because since I wanted this to arch more right here I used to start trying to build it up on this outside to make it arch and I went to Anastasia Beverly Hills and she did my eyebrows for me one time and she told me a trick is to start lower here where you want them to go arch and then you can start to slant it up higher so you won't have to peak this part up so much if that makes sense but I'm just going to ignore this eyebrow to show you how important it is to do them. I'm going to use this Gimme Brow Benefit. This is kind of like a fiber builder if you don't really have a lot of eyebrow hair, but um, it's tinted, so I'm just going to swipe this over because I would like a little tint in my eyebrows since my hair is blonde. 
I'm going to come back uh, to finish my inner corner highlight and things, but um, now I'm going to move on to the face. Let's talk about contour. I prefer uh, powder contour over cream just because I'm so fair. It's hard for me to find a cream color that matches my skin. Um, since I don't really have a lot of color, I need something that's really taupe, almost like a purplish color. I believe this is 504 from Ingla. I will link it below. I think this is my new favorite contour color. I have the Kevin Aquan one I like, but it's easy for me to look muddy with that. So I'm going to show you on this side what I'm going to do. I'm going to touch my NARS Eater brush in this, pick some of this color up, and I'm going to direct it um, from the corner of my ear down towards the corner of my mouth, making sure I don't come in too far. So, so I'm just going to work that up. So I thought I recorded this part, but it clipped it out, so I'm going to redo it right now. Next, I'm going to contour on this side with something too shimmery, so I'm going to use Betty Luminizer which is really pigmented and I'm going to show you um, you can't contour with something that's shimmery you bring it over too far see how this looks muddy this looks like a clean line right here and this looks muddy blush I am going to use a little NYX terracotta on my Mac 129 and I'm just going to apply it lightly here on the apples of my cheeks here I'm going to do what I used to do and I still can do is too much blush because I think I look so light. Do you see what this looks like now? Can you tell the difference between this and this? This looks more smooth and this looks like bands of color. So I thought I was recording and I wasn't. <laughs> Um, what I just did on this eye was I took my MAC Shroom and I just highlighted this inner corner here and then up on my brow bone. And the old me would have never even thought to highlight this eye. Then I went through with mascara. Um, you know, I put one little coat on here and then I coated the bottom of my eyelashes and now I'm showing you what I think a lot of girls do. They go over and over and over their eyelashes with coats of mascara and they start to look tarantula eyes which is like eee. I would pick up a highlighter this is my um, Chanel Camille de Plumes highlighter and I would just lightly dust that on the top of my cheekbone just right there you don't want to come too far in and that would give you that glow when you're reflecting in the light I don't even know if I would wear highlighter before I don't think I ever really did but wearing something that is the wrong color for your skin tone can muddy it up and pull weird attention so again in the summer this is a color I love but apricot is not the right color for me right now and the scheme so and some people just go ham with the highlighter so let me show you if I pick this up here and I just kind of brush this in some people will almost bring it under their eye like this and can you see that I don't know I kind of look like a grease ball next I'm going to show you something with eyelashes a lot of people don't like to wear eyelashes and you don't have to. I mean, it's personal preference. I'm going to put some eyelash glue on there. It's really important to fit them to your eye shape. Not only do I trim the eyelashes when I get them out of the pack, I also flex them back and forth to help make them pliable for my eye. I grasp them in the middle and then I'm just going to touch them in the middle of my eyelash or eyelid first. So that's how you want to have them. You want to make sure that this end piece doesn't come down too far. And I'm going to show you what happens if you put them on not in the center of your eye and it hooks around. It can make your eyelid look really droopy. So like, let's see, this one I'm going to put off. I'm going to put like this in my eye. Now watch. And now this lower piece um, but it's gonna kind of hang over okay can you see now where I have this one kind of it came around a little bit so this eye is now looking droopy it looks like it's all the way around hanging down while this eye looks more up and awake and this one because I didn't get proper placement of this is looking kind of sad and down can you tell the difference on that this one looks downturned while this one looks more awake so let's look at this side that I think is the proper technique versus this side. Droopy down, turned eye, muddy looking bronzer. 
sparkly bronzer. I don't know if you can tell in this, this light, sparkly bronzer versus just a clean cut look right here. That looks like more like a shadow, what I think looks more like a shadow. So I can't even with the lips, it's just too much. It was looking crazy. So I'm going to just pat the, uh, this is YSL Beige Tribute. Having a nice color that doesn't compete with your eyes is important to you. Normally it's good to pick one focal point, either your eyes or your lips. And there, I just kind of painted it on that side. I think it's a softer look right here when you pat it or you blot it with your finger. This side versus this side. Can you see the difference in the color of my neck? Just wearing one off shade, that's N3 to N4 versus this side. I think I have a much cleaner line here. My eye makeup looks 100% better. This one versus this one. It makes a huge difference. Now that I look like Two-Face from Batman, um, I'm gonna go take all this stuff off so I can lay back on the couch and recoup. But if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Um, I'd love to hear any stories if you guys used to do something crazy with your makeup that you have now changed, you know, from when you were younger. I like to call out when bad makeup happens to good people. <laughs> We've all been there. Every single, I mean, every single makeup artist and and everybody started somewhere. You know, it's all about progression and learning as you go of things that maybe aren't the most flattering. And when I tell you I used to put black eyeliner under my eye all the time, when I stopped doing that, it took me a long time. I kept thinking I looked funny or my makeup looked incomplete, but that's because you're used to seeing yourself a certain way all the time and so suddenly when it's not like that you think that you look weird but you don't it looks different it's this half versus this half if you guys have picked up a um a few pointers maybe or maybe not maybe you're like a b i like my makeup like that and if you do then you keep rocking it girl you do whatever makes you happy this isn't to put down anybody's technique of what they have just showing you what a difference the same exact products can make just applied differently but please give it a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe thanks for tuning in guys and i'll see you next time bye